The Philadelphia Eagles defense is coming off a historic season where they were one of the best defenses in the entire NFL, and now even after losing some guys in the offseason, the Eagles defense looks like it could somehow be even better in 2023 than it was in 2022, as we've got plenty of news regarding many different players, as well as the defense as a whole, that make it sound like this defense could be one of, if not the most dominating unit in the league, and if they find a way to do this, then the entire NFL should be afraid. So we're going to break it all down in this video today, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. So as I said, the Eagles defense had a historic year in 2022 as they were one of the best units in the league and they suffocated and dominated teams week after week and they were able to do this in a variety of different ways. Overall, the Eagles defense finished number two in the league in terms of yards per game, seventh in points per game. They were number one against the pass and they also were tied for fourth in turnovers with 27. But arguably the most impressive thing that the Eagles defense did in 2022 was their sack total as they were number one in the NFL in total sacks, racking up 70 on the year, which which not only was the best mark in franchise history, but also the third most sacks by any team in a single season in NFL history. So yeah, it's safe to say that the Eagles were able to get to the quarterback a lot in 2022, but it's very interesting because of the way that they were able to do this, as they didn't blitz very often under defensive coordinator Jonathan Gann, but the Eagles still had the highest sack percentage in the entire league, meaning that they were able to get to the quarterback consistently by only rushing four defenders, which is a huge testament to the immense talent the Eagles had on their defensive line. And now fast forward to this offseason, and it seems like the Eagles defense could be even scarier this coming season. And this comes after it seemed like some people thought that the Eagles defense was set to take a step back next year, and while they did lose some key defensive players like Javon Hargrave and CJ Gardner-Johnson in free agency, they also went out and added guys like Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith in the draft, and other guys like Terrell Edmonds and Nicholas Morrow in free agency, and the Eagles were also able to find a way to retain a lot of the defensive talent that was already on their roster, and Eagles GM Harry Roseman also had seemed to plan for some of the team's departures this offseason and offseason prior, as now an incredibly talented group of young guys that the Eagles had waiting in the wings will get their opportunity now that some of these other guys have left. And the Eagles also went and hired Sean Desai to be their new defensive coordinator after Jonathan Gannon left to be the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> which is arguably one of the most important changes to the Eagles defense this offseason. And now, all of a sudden, the Eagles defense is looking incredibly scary once again. And we've been getting a lot of news throughout the offseason hyping up the potential of this unit, and very recently, a bunch of different stuff has come out regarding several different players, as well as one specific unit of the defense further continuing to build the excitement surrounding this group. And in addition, I believe there is one key for the Eagles defense to take the next step this year, so let's dive into all that. So the first thing we gotta talk about is the Eagles defensive line as a unit, as they were ranked the number one defensive line in the entire NFL by PFF, and there really should be no surprise here. I mean, the article written by Zoltan Boudet says this, quote, a season ago, Philadelphia ranked second in the league in pressure percentage despite blitzing at a below average rate, and this was largely due to the defense's ability to get after the quarterback with just four pass rushers. So, as I said before, this is a huge testament to the amount of talent the Eagles have on their defensive line, as they just have so many guys that can get to the quarterback, and that starts with Hassan Reddick, and this is a guy who is clearly one of the best pass rushers in the league as he has had three straight seasons with 10 plus sacks, all with different teams might I add, and his best season came last year in his first year with the Eagles where he had 16 sacks, which was a career high and it was tied for the second most in the league last year, and Hassan Radek was probably the Eagles' best defender in 2022. He was extremely disruptive and he made game-changing plays week in and week out as he had five forced fumbles and three fumble recoveries in 2022, and he also had some great playoff performances as well, most notably versus the 49ers. But despite all his success, Reddick still believes that he can get even better. As per Josh Talentino, Reddick recently said this, quote, I'm in great shape. As crazy as it sounds, I feel as if there's still more levels for me to tap into. And he continued on saying, quote, we know our ultimate goals, but it starts with us striving for constant success. And that's him talking about the Eagles' aspirations of winning a Super Bowl next year. And I mean, if Reddick can get even better than last season, that would be absolutely insane because we saw his dominance and what he was able to do in 2022. And if there's another level to that, then a opposing quarterback should be scared. And Thomas R. Peterson actually made a really good point in a recent tweet that he made where he outlined Reddick's impressive stats over the past three years with three different teams being the Cardinals, Panthers, and now Eagles, and he said at the end of the tweet, quote, we haven't even seen him as a pass rusher with the same team in consecutive years. And this is true, Reddick wasn't used as a heavy pass rusher earlier in his career, and since he made the transition to primarily being a pass rusher, he has never been on the same team for consecutive seasons, so now he's going to get that opportunity as he's heading into his second year with the Eagles and this can only be helpful in helping Reddick make that next jump forward in his game. Now, some
someone else who will be looking to improve next season is Reddick's fellow edge rusher Josh Sweat, as he just had a career season as well, posting a career-high 11 sacks, as well as one forced fumble and a pick six, and he did all this before he suffered an injury in the second-to-last game of the Eagles' regular season versus the Saints that kept him out the remainder of the regular season, although he did end up returning in the playoffs. And before this injury, the duo of Sweat and Reddick were actually on a bit of a tear, as Brendan Deeg put out a tweet saying that from weeks 12 to 16, Sweat and Reddick combined for one interception and a touchdown, two forced fumbles, 10 tackles for loss, 13 and a half sacks, and 20 quarterback hits. And these are extremely impressive numbers to say the least over that span. And again, both guys believe that they can improve next year. And we've obviously already talked about Reddick, but Josh Sweat thinks he can take another jump forward as well. As he told Eagles insider Dave Spadaro recently, quote, I feel great and I feel like the best is yet to come. You figure this game out after you've been here for some time and you know what you have to do to take your game to new levels. I know it's being cliche, but it's about being consistent and building off what usually works for you. Whatever you're good at, just get better at that and stick with it. And when I hear this, I truly believe that Josh Sweat practices everything that he says here. I mean, this is a guy who's gotten better every single year that he's been in the league. He went from a fourth round pick in 2018 who barely played at all to a starter in 2021 and a star in 2022. I mean, in 2018, he just had one combined tackle and zero sacks. Then in 2019, he got better. He had four sacks. 2020, more development. He had six sacks. 2021, more development. Seven and a half sacks. And then obviously had a career high 11 sacks in 2022. What will the total be in 2023? That remains to be seen and we'll find out, but there's no question that this combo of Reddick and Sweat is going to be lethal next season. And we haven't even talked about the other guys on this defensive line. And don't worry, we're going to get into all that, but before we do, I just want to say if you are enjoying this video and want to see others like it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Around 80% of the people that watch these videos are not subscribed. If you're one of those people and you've been watching the videos consistently, you're enjoying them and you love the Philadelphia Eagles, make sure you go fix that right now and subscribe and turn on notifications. I think it's a win-win for both of us. And now with all that being said, let's get back into the video. So getting to the rest of the D-line, let's start with Jordan Davis, who's expected to have a much bigger role in 2023 than he did in his rookie year in 2022, and PFF somewhat surprisingly ranked him as the number 19 interior defender in all of football ahead of next season, and the article which was written by Gordon McGinnis said this, quote, there's some projection here with Davis who played just 270 snaps in the regular season and playoffs last year, but he should pair with fellow former Georgia Bulldog Jalen Carter to spearhead the Eagles defensive interior by the end of the 2023 season. Davis registered 10 tackles resulting in a defensive stop from 142 snaps against the run and flashed as a pass rusher, including four pressures on 14 pass rushing snaps against the commanders in week three. And in addition to this, everything we've seen and heard from Davis this offseason makes it seem like he's getting ready to have a breakout year. And then you have Jalen Carter, which PFF also mentioned in that article, and Carter's going to have a chance to come in in his rookie year and contribute right away. Uh, we don't know if he's going to be the starter like PFF is suggesting here, but regardless, he's going to make the most of his opportunity, as he's apparently looked really good during rookie minicamp and OTAs, which we've talked plenty about in previous videos. And so far, I've just been talking about the potential starting lineup, although, again, I really don't know if Carter's going to be the one that ends up starting. I still kind of have a feeling that the Eagles might roll with Fletcher Cox. I think there's definitely a good chance of that, as he's the veteran, he's the guy that's been here for a long time, and he's a leader in that locker room, and he's still able to produce, even though he's definitely close to the end of his career, as he put up seven sacks last season, which isn't bad at all for a defensive tackle. But regardless of who ends up starting, the Eagles still have a very good option on their second string defensive line at the defensive tackle position. And PFF seems to think overall the Eagles have a very good second string defensive line, saying, quote, there's a case to be made that Philadelphia's second string defensive line would also rank in the top 20 on this list, which kind of sounds crazy at surface level, but if you really just look at it, it makes a lot of sense because you're either going to have Fletcher Cox or Jalen Carter coming off the bench. You're going to have Brandon Graham, who had a career high 11 sacks last year and is just a franchise legend. And although I don't think he's going to give you 11 sacks or around that production level this year, I still think he's very capable capable of putting up some solid numbers and making his impact felt. You have a guy who's kind of a hidden gem in Milton Williams who's flashed some potential so far in this league, but just hasn't really ever gotten a big opportunity. And then of course you have rookie Nolan Smith. And Nolan Smith is a guy who I've talked about a bunch before on this channel, as he's been extremely impressive throughout this entire offseason, whether that be at rookie minicamp or OTAs, just everyone's been raving about Nolan Smith and what he's brought to this team, and he's definitely becoming a fan favorite through this, his work ethic, and his personality. And Jeffrey Knox of Inside the Eagles recently had some very high praise for Smith, saying, quote, if we were able to take Jalen Hurts, his work ethic, and maturity, and create a defensive alter ego slash edge rusher, Nolan Smith might be the result. No, scratch 
catch that. Nolan Smith would be the result. Man, I feel like every couple days there's something new out there that's just praising Nolan Smith, and it sounds like he could have a huge impact in his rookie season in whatever opportunity or role he is given, and Eagles fans are just absolutely gonna love this guy. And this defensive line as a whole just sounds like it's going to be unstoppable, and it's got other teams taking notice too, as John McMullen recently wrote that a rival NFC executive told Sports Illustrated's Eagles today, quote, I was looking at that group earlier and counted 16 or 17 NFL players. It's ridiculous. I mean, when you have other teams taking notice, you know you're doing something right. But the crazy thing is, we haven't even talked about the other parts of the Eagles defense. Because make no mistake, there's not very many weak points in this group. We haven't even mentioned the elite cornerback duo of Darius Slay and James Bradbury, both who had amazing seasons last year. Darius Slay still proved to be one of the best corners in the entire league, getting a Pro Bowl selection, and he had some dominating performances throughout the year, most notably in Week 2 where he locked up Justin Jefferson. And then James Bradbury was arguably the best coverage player in the entire league last year, posting a 51.8 passer rating allowed when targeted on average, which was the best mark in the NFL, and he also earned a second team All-Pro selection. And for some reason, both of these guys have been doubted at various points this offseason, and I expect both to come out next season and prove people wrong. And then you got guys like N'Kobe Dean and Reed Blankenship who are looking to have breakout seasons, and others like Terrell Edmonds and Nicholas Mara who are also looking to make pretty solid contributions to the team. But arguably the most important piece of this defense is the defensive coordinator, and that of course is Sean Desai, as last year the downfall of the Eagles defense was coaching as Jonathan Gannon refused to adjust and send more pressure in the Super Bowl when Patrick Mahomes was able to have a lot of success and the Eagles defense just wasn't able to get home and get really any pressure on Mahomes or get any sacks during the course of the game, which in turn led to the Eagles not being able to get a stop, especially in the second half, which then cost them a world championship. So if Sean Desai is able to do what Gannon didn't, I honestly think that it could be the key to taking this defense to the next level. I mean, if he sends more pressure, if he makes more adjustments when necessary, I think the defense can reach its ceiling next year. Now, what is that ceiling? I'll tell you one thing. I think it's higher than the historic success that the Eagles defense saw last year, and if they're able to get to this level, then the entire NFL should be afraid. But let me know your guys' thoughts down in the comments below. How good do you think this Eagles defense can be next year? I'd love to hear your guys' opinions on it. And if you did enjoy this video and want to show some support, make sure you drop a like and subscribe to the channel again so you don't miss other videos coming in the future. And if you want to watch another video covering the Eagles since OTAs ended, you can go watch this one right here. Now with all that being said, that's pretty much all I got for this one, guys. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.